Hello, everyone. Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com, and this is Trading Simplified. Obviously, I want to thank all you girl, guys and girls for being here tonight. Appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. I know we make the show hard to find, but once you're registered, you should be registered for a while. In fact, tonight's session didn't show up until a few minutes ago. Sorry about that. So what are we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. Boy, I might have a lot to say about that. Your questions on trading, if you don't mind, hang out or hold on to them as, as long if the if they're not relevant slides just hang on to them until we get to the live charts and you can ask them anything you want and your favorite stocks and then i guess we'll add crypto this week just put a dollar sign in front of it if it's crypto so i know it's not a stock and there's no confusion and we'll, we'll get the crypto out of the way real quick and then we'll get to the stops stocks so what's what are we focus on well i did a presentation a while back which will make sense in a few minutes before the bomb blows up so i want to revisit that just real quick are we in 1996 or 1999? And that too will make a lot of sense in a few minutes. We'll tease it there. And what might be the holy grail of crypto? And a little clickbait here, but not clickbait, not what you think. Before we do all that, we have to look at the disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading. Ours are often summing up, borrowing a line from my buddy Greg. All predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now. And then last summer, when the market was right around new highs, I did a presentation for stockcharts.com called Before the Bomb Blows Up. And the reason I named it that is usually people wait until the market's down about 30%, friends and relatives, before the phone starts ringing, before they call me. Dave, what do I do? I'm down 30%. I'm freaking out. Well, I don't know. I'm kind of. It's kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. If I tell them the market go down another thirty percent or forty percent or more, which it can, then of course that stresses them out. And if the market doesn't turn around soon, or let's say they do get out and the market turns right back around, I'm kind of in a bad position. But my thinking is that they go in and watch this video now, now when the market's at new highs then they might just be okay and they might understand market downturns and how to live and possibly even prosper through them or prosper after they're done at least. Anyway, one of the systems I talked about, I just wanna briefly show you here. I know everybody here knows it. It's a, it's a TFM 10% system. And just let me tell you what's going on here. First of all, I'll put the spiders up here. I should have put cash S&P. I didn't realize that my uh, the, the testing was done on the cash S&P, but it works the same with spiders. The buy line here is simply 10% below. <laughs> Sorry about that. 10% below the 50 week closing high. I had to turn the AC on. It's blowing right on me. 50, <laughs> 10% below the 50 week closing high. So, way back in January of 2020, Market closed at a brand new high. It's like coronavirus. Ah, we don't need no stinking coronavirus. Thank you, John. Uh, hopefully, I just didn't spread some coronavirus. And the market just kind of was plodding along very nicely in here. And then, of course, we all know what happened next. So the 10% line, if you took this number here and you took 90% of it, if you want to look at it that way or subtract 10% from it, however you want to look at it, that gives you the 10% line. You can see we close below it and below the 50 week moving average. That's all you need for a sell signal. Now, I'm not going to go into painstaking detail on the sell signals and the buy signals, but I just want to kind of give them to you real quick. Uh, by the way, if you're not a member of DaveLeonard.com, if you sign up for a free membership, you can get a free market timing course where I go into all this stuff in a lot more detail. But anyway, that's the sell signal there. And what shocked me with this, as I said a dozen times, maybe more, is that we got a weekly sell signal before we got even a daily sell signal on the bow ties. And the other thing that's kind of cool, and I was just looking at this right before we went live, is that it wasn't like a sell and you had to rush out and sell right away. So not that I would recommend you sit around and wait, but even if you were trying to think whether or not you should sell, it went a whole nother week before actually beginning to sell off in earnest. And then it really sold off fairly hard. And you'll notice you end up buying the market a little higher. So you might be thinking whipsaw. 
or avoiding one hell of a diaper change. Diaper change is a term I stole from Ian McActavy. Ian used to have the best presentations ever. I wonder if they're recorded somewhere because I'd like to go back and kind of get some pointers from him because he, he had the best ever. But anyway, before I digress too far, so you could argue that, hey, we got out here and you got back in here, Dave. That's that's not much market timing. Well, the market did come back. And buying and holding will work until it don't. And I'll show you why it does it in just a second. And as Greg Morris once told me, he came down to visit several years ago. We were living in the old house out of the country. Not that it's relevant. But anyway, we were talking about the markets and stuff. And he said, well, Dave, Bear markets are devastating, whip saws are frustrating. You could survive frustration. So if you're frustrated because you got back in a little bit higher, that's, you know, you're okay. I mean, look what the market is now, even with this little slide we had. Anyway, I, that really stuck with me and made a lot of sense. So the buy, just back this up a little bit. Let's see, the buy, you need two lows below, I'm sorry, two lows above the 50-week moving average. That's two weeks of land your light and a close above the buy line. So we had that right here. Let me put all this back in. Now, what I found fairly fascinating is, as ugly as it seems and has felt, and I know I feel your pain, <laughs> lately, when I plotted this chart, I was shocked at how far away we are from that buy line. Anything below the buy line, you have to start thinking about a sell. And now the 50 week moving average is caught up to it. So for all intents and purposes, anything below the buy line now would be a sell signal, but we still have a long ways to go to get there. Now the bow ties are trying to bow tie down. This is a daily chart. And that's what I was saying earlier, or certainly, certainly alluding to is we didn't get a bow tie sell signal. Until after, believe it or not, that weekly signal triggered. And that made me feel pretty good about that weekly signal being, I guess, price based. It's it caught up to the market really quickly. As soon as the market drops 10%, you need to think about getting out of the way. And I keep saying I don't want to go into a lot of details on it, but obviously the details there were based on the fact that if a market's gonna drop 50% or 80% like the NASDAQ did in, in, 19, in 2000, it's gonna to have to drop 10% first. So after it drops 10%, you need to think about getting out of the way. Oh, by the way, that buy line in ACP, for those of you who have stock charts ACP, I talked with the programmers and I got an email a week or so ago and they said that they have adjusted it for me because before I said, hey, you know, if you're trading some other market, it might not be 10%, it might be 20% or 30%, it might be a long ways away based on the volatility of the market. But anyway, you can now adjust that parameter. And in the next stock chart show, I'll spend a little time working on that or showing you guys how to do that you know, if you can't figure it out on your own. Anyway, so the moving averages are coming together. And as Greg taught me, and I've said a thousand times, as soon as price crosses below a moving average, and back here, if you squint your eyes, you can see it, an exponential moving average, that is, it'll turn down. A simple moving average might take a little bit longer to catch up. And by accident, I discovered the relationship between the 20 EMA, the 30 EMA, and the 10 simple, and it makes these nice little bow tie patterns like this right here every now and then. Now, this isn't one I'd actually trade, I like them coming off of major, major lows or major, major highs. So this one to the downside, I wouldn't trade it in and of itself, but I might be looking to short some stocks for sure if I get that sell signal. Certainly think about getting out of the way of the market. Now, anyway, so the, so the moving averages will turn down except for the simple, but the simple in this case is caught up fairly quickly to the market. But the moving averages, the exponential ones will turn down as soon as price crosses below them. So if we get back above them, they'll turn back up and they might cross right back to the upside. Down below is just the proper order indicator. Yellow means they're flopping back and forth. Red means they're in downtrend proper order, meaning that the 10 is below the 20 and the 20 is below the 30. And then just the opposite, 
for the upside, 10 greater than 20 greater than 30. So we're still in uptrend proper order because the moving averages are working really hard to catch up with price, but they haven't caught up with price just yet. So you can see nice little green here, still in uptrend proper order. But again, the moving averages have turned down. So depending on where we end up over the next few days, this could be a bona fide signal, sell signal, or we could have maybe dodged yet another bullet. So it did get iffy back here, if you guys remember. I'm sure you do. And by the way, back here, I did a lot of speeches on, hey, this is why we don't exit the market. And we're, we're in quite a few of, stock, few of the stocks that we were in back then. We're still in those now. And that's why you don't exit the market when it gets iffy. And, and tonight, for example, I was kind of amazed that material construction is hanging in there. We'll talk about that in one second. And we still have an M&C stock in our portfolio that we've been in forever. If we would have gotten out of it last October, we might be disappointed right now. Now, just real quick, this is the, I grabbed this spreadsheet right before we went live, just so I could show you. This is what happened after the pandemic. So I keep saying it was 30% drop. It was 28% drop. And that was after the signal. That was 30, 30 something percent, as you saw in the slides, two slides ago, whatever. But peak to trough, it was 28% after the signal. So that's the diaper change. And basically what happens is you get out of the market on a signal, and then I measure how far, how much further the market goes after the signal, peak to trough far from signal to trough. And now those are the last two bear markets in there, real bear, well, big bear markets at least. I guess 2020 was a bear market. Yeah, by all measurements. But you can see last two significant bear markets, 2000 or late 99 and 2000 and what, seven or whatever, 44% and 52% respectively. Obviously, Great Depression up here at 83%. And then throughout history, you can see there have been some 20 and 30 and 40% drops fairly often. And fairly often from a statistical standpoint, if the market was normally distributed, in other words, that's a fancy way of saying it adheres, if it adhered to statistics, you wouldn't see nearly this many big old moves. And here's the really interesting thing. We haven't triggered the downside yet, just yet, okay? So market's up 42% from that last buy signal. So that's nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, you'd be up maybe 44% if you had no market timing at all. But you also would have been able to sleep through a lot of that pandemic slide sitting on a big wad of cash. So obviously a big, huge fan about market timing, and I think it's very important that, sh that you're not a buy and hold, or buy and hope, as we often call it. Somebody was asking me this morning, I was talking about some radio, famous radio talk show host, financial guy, I'm not gonna say his name, but he used to make me so mad because he would get on airwaves and say, you can make 12% a year in stocks. I was like, no, you don't, Danny. <laughs> Yeah, you might, but every now and then you'll have a 50% haircut and he probably doesn't understand drawdowns. If you lose 50%, how much do you have to make to get back to break even? I'll save you the math, 100%. 50 day moving average is a well-watched moving average. What I did here was I plotted the, the, the Landry light down here. And again, not to beat the dead horse, but that's just the lows are greater than the moving average. So you can see when it intersects the moving average, it goes back to zero. But what's fascinating about the 50 is you can go all the way back, I think way back to November of 2020. And it never did, you never did have any downside Landry light until of course, back in October, September, October, where the highs were less than the moving average. So market did get a little iffy back then. Okay, doesn't mean you should rush out and sell your stocks, but definitely keep stops in place. And then since then, we've had a pretty good run. So zero days back here. You had a few days, or more than a few days, okay, of downside Landry Light. That is of some concern. Um, 
if you were trading something like the 230 EMA system, or in this case, I guess it'd be 250 E, 250 SMA system, then it kind of barely triggered a sell signal. Well, I guess it sort of did. But anyway, the market did recover and went back up. So even if you took a signal like that, a little bit of whipsaw ain't gonna kill you, right? And we've been green ever since. And of course, we just went to zero yesterday. And we're still at zero today. All right, I know I kind of went through it quickly. I've gone I've I've gone through that a thousand times, but if you Become a free member. You can go to dayloader.com slash members. And then there's another bigger link I'll put in a post where you can you can also sign up. And you can get a free market timing course. All right, let's talk a little bit about crypto. As you know, I've been a bit of a bull lately here. One of you guys told me that you saw Sorkin on CNBC, something that I... I can't remember last time I watched. Maybe I put it on maybe last October when the market was sliding or something so I can go eat lunch and watch the market slide. <laughs> but anyway, Sorkin said we're either in 1996 or 1999, and I'm paraphrasing because that's what I guess it's hearsay because one of you guys said it. It's not straight from the horse's mouth, but he was referring to crypto, obviously. And I really think we're in 1999. Oh, was that a Freudian slip? I think we're in 1996. <laughs> I saw, uh, I forget his name already. Uh, what's the guy, MicroStrategy, MSTR, the CEO. He did an interview with Tucker Carlson. And basically, Tucker didn't say much for the first 50 minutes. And this guy just went on and on. But it was fascinating. I know you want to party with me. But I actually, when I watch YouTube like that, I watch them at double speed while I work. And just listen mostly, but really fascinating, especially as it as, as it applies to Bitcoin. And this guy has put a lot of money into Bitcoin, a lot of the company's money into Bitcoin. Now I'm not gonna beat the dead horse on all this because I would say it quite a bit, but it's not about the crypto, it's about being a trader and recognizing a potential opportunity. And a lot of people have been poo-pooing it. Well, that's fine. If you're a trader and you're poo-pooing it then you need to, what do you need to do? You need to short the market. That's what you should be doing if, if, if you're a trader and that's your methodology. But the point I've been saying a lot is, would you rather profit or pontificate? Now, for some reason, it reminds me of the, the Boudreau joke where Boudreau goes fishing and I guess Pierre, his friend, became a game warden and Boudreau didn't know he became a game warden and Boudreau lights a stick of dynamite and throws it in the water. Whoo, you know, and all the fish come floating up and Boudreau starts scooping them up. And Pierre said, Boudreaux, man, I hate to tell you, but I became a game warden last week, and I'm going to have to arrest you for this illegal fish. And so Boudreaux lights another stick of dynamite, didn't flinch anything, sticks it between Pierre's legs, and looks at Pierre and says, Pierre, you're going to fish or you're going to talk? So it's kind of like, you know, you got to fish or cut bait with this stuff. You don't have to trade them. Don't let me be the Judas goat, as I've been saying quite a bit, and suck you into something you're not comfortable doing but at least take a look and recognize whether or not there might be an opportunity there. So anyway, and as I've been saying quite a bit, it's about applying a conceptually correct methodology, which I'll have a little bit more to say about here in just one second. Some good news and some bad news when it comes to crypto. The good news is that a conceptually correct methodology, speaking of a conceptually correct methodology, in other words, trading with the trend, which I think is the best thing to do. And that's why they call me a trend following moron. I don't care. Just don't call me late for supper. <laughs> which it's almost time for that, right? But a conceptually correct, and I stole that term from a bar, from Larry Connors. And long story endless, I used to do a lot of system testing and I'd share a lot of it with Larry. And every now and then I would tell him about some system I discovered by accident. And he would say, well, wait a minute, that doesn't sound conceptually correct. And we couldn't figure out why it worked. And so we had to toss it out. But anyway, conceptually correct means something that makes sense from a conceptual standpoint, again, like trading with the trend. And pullbacks make a lot of sense to me because you're shaking out some of the nervous Nellies, like a TKO, you're shaking out some nervous Nellies. 
you're attracting some eager shorts. And when the market goes back up, or if the market goes back up and triggers an entry, these people have to put up a shut up. Anyway, my core methodology works really well. And when we get to the live charts, maybe we can find a Landry Light pullback or two and show you that. By the way, one of you guys uh, sent me an indicator or actually published in the Facebook group for Landry Light for Trading View. And it's really, really cool. We need to tweak it a little bit. I, I found a couple issues with it. So hopefully um, we can work on that a little bit and, and maybe make it uh, public for everyone or at least publish it there. Now, the thing is, the core methodology could work. And because it's an inefficient market, even breakouts can work. Even just buying the ones that are going up the most sometimes can work. And that can be a little scary at times. But it does take a healthy dose of money management, which I'll talk about here in just one second. The bad news is, as I alluded to last week, there's a lot of things that I still need to figure out. Some of the bad news is if you're swapping between pairs or coins or tokens, whatever you want to call them, you could end up chasing your tail a lot. And, and I've had a lot of scratch, 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 small loss, small loss, small loss, tiny gain, tiny gain, tiny gain. And it seems like net, net, it's causing a lot of attrition to my account, all that trading, all that churning or hot swapping, prettier girl chasing hot swapping, hot potato, whatever you want to call it. And I'll walk you through a little bit of that in, in just a few minutes. But it does take its toll. And it takes its toll on you mentally too, because one of the things it does is like, oh, okay, well, I'm in this one. It's not performing. Well, there's another prettier girl, something I should swap into. You swap it to the next one. It doesn't perform. You do that two or three times. And all of a sudden, the first one really begins to take off. You wake up the next day and go, oh, man, it took off. Looks great. It's like, oh. Damn it, I swapped out of that one. So I'm still figuring out a few things. One thing is you can't kiss all the women, and maybe I need to back off a little bit and just say, okay, I'm in this one. Maybe I need to wait until I'm stopped out and proven wrong by the stop and not chase the other pairs. Now, I will say this, just kind of a random thought here. One thing that I have seen, and I might have it in the slide, yeah, is that when the tide moves on these things, like when the tide starts ripping, that's if you're a fisherman, that's a good time to fish. When the tide's not moving, there's fishing in, in that great. And uh, just FYI, if you're not a fisherman, the reason is the little fish get caught up in the tide and the big fish can swim against them and eat them, you know. But when the tide's really moving, when these things are really moving, you could do that hot swapping. It's like, okay, not working, not working, not working, not working. Bam. And you nail one, then you nail another, then you nail another, then you nail a, you know, when, when you're nailing them, you're nailing those IPTs, and you take it off half, and you're putting more money in your account, and then you're buying and buying more and more pairs. If you're sitting there and you're trying to make something happen, and you're not letting anything work, and the tide's not really moving, that's when you could waste a lot of time and end up kind of spinning your wheel, chasing your own tail, et cetera. So that's one thing that I'm working on. And it's a work in progress. Trading in general is a work in progress. I don't have all the answers. Here's the thing, you know, the day you never see my fat ass again is a day that I figured everything out. You just have to take the imperfect nation of the market, nature of the markets, the imperfect nature of us. Okay, we've got this caveman brain that hasn't caught up to this modern technology and there's a lot of things that happen there and that's why I spend so much time with trading psychology now this is kind of a good thing and a bad thing but probably more of a good thing all the hot swapping is a lot of fun and it's it's active and I noticed I said the word fun which is a dangerous word to use in trading and trading them properly as I often say could be a little boring so might have to back off from that, if, especially if the markets doesn't don't resume this kind of rip roaring uptrend. A lot of these things have been in, and then gravitate toward the core methodology, such as the pullbacks and such. And we'll take a look look at those in just one second. Now, the holy grail of crypto, I think, might be money management. As I've been saying quite a bit, and I think I might have said this. I know I said this in the stock chart show, and maybe the week before. But long story endless. A friend of mine used to work offshore up until a few weeks ago, and 
those guys that work offshore get paid a lot of money. God bless them, you know, getting us some some uh, energy out there. And and some of them live very very meager lives outside of uh, their work when they're not on the rigs or whatever. They're living in a trailer or whatever, and because half the time they're out in the rig anyway, so they don't bother buying a nice home or whatever. And uh, he was telling me some of these guys might make 200 grand a year. And, and he said at nighttime, now they all go to rooms and they play on their phones trading crypto. And I found that really interesting. And I guarantee you, or I'd be willing to bet that they're not using proper money management. And the people that I've met that I know are, are yeah, people that I've met and know, I guess, who really haven't studied trading much and have gotten into crypto, they're not using any money management. So I think it's a golden opportunity for us who understand money management, willing to use a little money management in crypto. And I really think it can be the holy grail. I talked about this one yesterday and I'll show you a live chart in a minute. And hopefully, I know I just said hope, but hopefully it's still going up. What's it, 1475 here? But you can see this is almost a Landry Light pullback, close enough for government work. In fact, it's just a pullback. I'd have played it anyway. I don't always wait for it to go all the way down to the 30 EMA. But anyway, lots of Landry Light, little pullback in here. I got long here, and two days later, I hit the IPT. Lately, by the way, I've been using just 20% for my IPT to make life easy. I multiply whatever I get in by 1.2. And that gives me my IPT. Now, I, on occasion, I will use a little bit less if it's something that's higher priced and more established. Like I bought some Solana earlier, and I only have a 10% IPT in it. Now, in stocks, as you know, our IPT could be anywhere from it might be 10%, it might be 20%, it might be 30%. And that means that our if the IPT is 30%, it means our stop is 30% lower. On some of these, by the way, some of the breakout ones, I'm playing them a little bit more closer to the vest when I'm buying in those highs. But anyway, I have it fully adjusted to the volatility of the market. I probably need to get an HV indicator in here to give me a feel for how volatile it truly is. And you can see I got stopped out in the remainder of that trade and I went right back in. And the reason I went right back in was, well, it's set up again as a pullback. And it looked pretty good. So I bought it here, flipped it out later that day for a 20% move. And I, as I said quite a bit, I was doing a presentation a while back and I captured all my slides and everything. And in the middle of the presentation, I'm like, wow, that, that happened in three minutes. The the trigger to the initial profit target. And that's that's a pretty amazing thing when it when it when it happens. The problem is as I alluded to earlier, is you can't sit around waiting for that to happen all day. Before you know it, you wasted your whole day doing this stuff. And I'm still nickel and dimes with this stuff, wrapping my head around it. I'm not betting the form. As I've said a lot of times, if my crypto account blew up tomorrow, I could get on my life and it, it wouldn't, I'd be pissed, don't get me wrong, but I'd be able to live to fight another day, right? All right, let's 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 hop into the live charts and then you guys want to ask about a few um, crypto pairs or tokens or coins. Do so now. I just want to show you a couple of things. Okay, while I'm walking through a few of these, if you guys want me to take a look at any of these pairs, please let me know. The first thing I always do when I come in is I sort by the strongest pairs. And then I start looking at them. And by the way, one thing that I've been saying, not probably to a fault lately, is it's quite possible that you might just be able to not buy anything if it's below the 30, and then consider only buying things that are above the 30 EMA. So as you go through these, now these are the strongest ones. So this isn't really a rip roar. Oh, dang. So here's another case. Dang. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to buy this one back is what I'm going to do. And, you know, I've, I've got to be careful because everything always looks better in a webinar <laughs> for some reason. But this is one that I bought in uh, a couple days ago, and I just got bored with it, I guess, and just uh, shook out of it. Anybody have anybody notice that Coinbase sometimes takes forever to um, to load these things up sometimes? 
So I'll just do a thousand dollars. I'll keep, like I said, you know, I'm nickel and dime in this stuff. And I was hoping I had a live trade to show you just so we could mess around with it. So we'll do a thousand over here. All right, we're done. Okay, so I just want a thousand. We'll put an arrow in it. It's always fun to do a trade doing the well, Fibonacci. <laughs> What's that? So sometimes you can just buy them while they're going up. Now, these aren't huge numbers in here, and maybe it's maybe a new day started. But this is going into new highs, and my theory is greater fools, and uh, just like I went back in, and I went back in because there's a little FOMO in me, and that's that's part of the um, hot swapping problem is that you you just get if you you're getting out of these things and then before you know it you're getting back in so i saw about the strongest first this looks kind of inter interesting as a new pair i don't know how liquid it is but sometimes these new pairs come out and they can really spike higher in fact that looks pretty good too <laughs> i feel like my feet tonight everything looks uh looks so good So just for S and G's, and I don't want you, I don't think you should trade as willy nilly as I'm trading now. I'm just kind of looking at these things. Well, we'll pass. Let's see if I have any cash over here. That's just kind of interesting. So let's put a let's put a little mark on this. Let's put a, a green. So let's come back to that one. So you can see sometimes you can just look at these things and, and look for the strongest ones. And as as a, I don't know when the, when the new day starts with trading view, but maybe the new day has got these messed up a little bit. Here's another one. Look, I don't want to if I keep showing these things, I look like an idiot. But here's one I was in, and got knocked out of it, scratched out of it, and then it, it took off without me. So first thing I do is I sort by the strongest first, and then one thing I'll do is go because I'm only going to buy one that's positive, right? I'll also go to like where it's just starting to they're just a uh, little bit on the positive side and that's where you're going to find the pullbacks and, and such but as i go through these again notice that the ones that uh, this one you can't buy this is another frustrating thing now you can't buy this one in the us for some reason here's here's the crazy part i remember looking at this thing way back here i actually sold something and tried to buy this thing at two bucks a share or two bucks a token or a coin, whatever the damn thing is. <laughs> so, thank you, John. John says trading view switches over at 7 p.m. That's why these numbers are kind of small over here because the day is just getting started according to trading view. So it just flipped over right around the time of started this this webinar. But I went to buy this one like I swear to God, it's way back here. It might have been a buck fifty. I seem to remember buck forty. You know, and whether or not I could have held it, I don't know. But I know I tried to buy it again at like 180, and and then maybe on this pullback I tried to buy it again. Every time I go to buy it, it says, "Hey, you can't buy that in the United States." I'm like, "Damn it!" So that's one of the things I'm working through. There's a lot of issues, and the only way to learn these things is to just get out there and trade them. Now, this is something. This is one of these newer ones. Let's see what it is. It might be due to this exchange. And so that's another thing we talked about last week. Is um, And I might have been in this one too. I don't remember. But last week, sometimes you got you don't know whether it's just new to this exchange or a new coin altogether, and whether or not that new coin has some sort of uh, excitement to it, like an IPO. And again, that's something I'm trying to figure out. Again, the great news is something as simple as a pullback to the moving average, or just a pullback in general can work really well. I'll be willing to bet TKO would work great. Anything that's conceptually correct will work here it'll probably work especially well since and here's another one that i thought about now this one has long tail so it might be kind of thin and i don't know whether i was in this one or not but this little breakout did catch my eye back here and i might have gotten bored or hot swapped out of it so i know i'm not blowing you away tonight with some of this but when these things go they can really go let me show you what's in my portfolio and then we'll take a look at your picks and see if you guys have anything that's worth a shot. Everything in blue is something I was looking at, or at one point I was considering. This G-A-L-A-X, I got knocked out of this one. I rode this one for a long time. 
you can see my original buy was down at 15 cents. Okay. And then I flipped it out later that day, wrote it up, wrote it up. And I don't remember exactly where I got stopped out. I got a little alert here, as you can see, just in case it starts going back up, might be worth a shot. E and J is another one that I've got a little alert in nice little pullback to the 30. I would have preferred if this pullback was a little higher than this, this breakout here, but it still looks like it has potential. This one, this one I missed, it took off. I think I might have been all filled up in my uh, portfolio at the time. And you can see there's a few pullbacks to the EMAs and things that I'm watching in here. I always keep Bitcoin in here to keep an eye on things. One thing I was thinking about lately is I'm wondering if looking at Bitcoin and looking at Ethereum, because those are two of the biggest ones, especially Bitcoin, and I'm wondering if whether or not those are above their moving average, the 30 EMA, I wonder if that can kind of help you in the trading of these other things. In other words, it would be interesting, it'd be fun, I don't even know part of me, but to go in and look at, look at how much money you made or did not make while Bitcoin was above its moving average or below its moving average, I should say, and figure out whether or not it's worth it to kind of use Bitcoin as kind of like a like an overall market type of gauge, okay? Maybe get a little less aggressive as long as there's land you like to the downside in Bitcoin, or if it's just plain and simple below the moving average. And I'd be willing to bet you go back to October, and I don't know when I open up this KuCoin account. I'll have to look, but I had a rip roar. And you go back and watch presentations back here. I was pretty damn excited about crypto, right? So this thing was ripping, I guarantee you those uh, shit coins, S-H-Y-T, were ripping too. So blue means something I considered or was considering. And you can see, here's another thing. I'm glad I left these alerts in here. I've probably been spending too much time flipping through these charts all day lately. And so I'm going to start doing what I do with the core methodology start throwing alerts in there. And when I get an alert trigger, then I'll do something and then go about my life. This one's kind of a newer coin, at least newer to this exchange. Had a nice little takeoff, nice little pullback. They always seem to do this crazy spike. I don't know if that's real trading or not. By the way, that's another thing that, that I'm working on is what to do in these spikes. And in some cases, especially like after the IPT, I'll put in just a wild and crazy limit order to take off a few at some crazy number and see if they're willing to pay me overnight in a spike. Uh, near misses, another thing I'm working on, and I said this in a stock chart show, came in here on Sunday, kind of snuck in here because I was helping the wife clean the garage. She took off to get some lunch. I ran in here and started trading. <laughs> and uh, I bought one and within like three minutes, I only put like a thousand bucks in, but when like three, within three or four minutes, it was up like 180 bucks and I was looking for 200 bucks for the first loaf and then I'd sell half. So I guess hundred dollars profit and then let, let the rest of it ride. And uh, anyway, by the time I did all that and found it and everything, she was already back. We, we actually moved to, to the city where everything's really close and convenient now. And she's like, lunch is here. And I'm like, Oh man, it's like, okay, well I'm going to come back after lunch. And if, if it's not quite there, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to take partial profit. So I came back after lunch. It was negative. So I got, I had to get out. So that could be a little frustrating. And then these huge spikes, I don't know if this is real or not. These huge spikes overnight can be a little frustrating too, if you're not capitalizing them. So I'm still working on these issues. If you guys, if you guys got ideas, bring them up at Facebook. If you're watching, if you're not in a member of Facebook, then leave them in a YouTube comment. And I do read and answer when necessary, all of those, all the comments. So, Purple means I am long and have a stop and IPT in place. And orange is pretty much the same thing. It's just in a different account. I just have it flagged differently. So you can see right now I'm long sand, Dow, and Dow I just bought because it was going up. In fact, I actually flipped in and out of this one a couple of times today for small losses and now I'm back in again. So that's a case of that admission of guilt about that hot swapping being uh, an attrition to your account. Soul was not a perfect setup, but I did like the way it was kind of breaking out nicely in here. And so I went ahead and got long that one. 
Crow is one I got back in, and I don't remember where I got back in, but this is one I was talking to one of you guys via private message, and I went back and looked at my trades, and I had trades around 25 cents, so I was probably buying this initial breakout. By the way, 2.30 EMA breakout, which actually happens right there, which I, I wasn't trading that system at the time, but I'd be willing to bet that was a, a 2.30 EMA breakout at 25 cents. So I did get knocked out of my free roll on this somehow, but I am back in. L pools just one I bought because it was going up. And you can see I was actually a long way back here and these spikes probably took me out. But what's kind of interesting is never did touch that 30 EMA. And maybe what I need to do, and again, it's a work in progress, or maybe what I need to do is once I get in, just say, screw it. I'm not gonna get out unless it touches that 30 EMA in some cases. And there's another one, COVID. COVID? Covesting, and you can see it really hasn't done a whole lot. Bought this little breakout in here, and it's already come back in. So, not too much to get excited about until you get to something like this XAVA. What did I say? It was 14 in that last slide. So, that was uh, I did that two days ago, and now it's 17 and change. So, so far, so good on that one. And I guess I'm gonna have to get happy with having big winners like this and just let them run as opposed to the excitement, which is always dangerous, of flipping in and out a lot of these pairs. It's it's fun and exciting, but the real money, as I preach, is gonna be a longer term trend. And again, look at this one, beautiful setup here, beautiful setup here, this is core methodology stuff. And then I'll just trail stop higher, we'll see what happens on that one. Luna, this one's really nice. I got in this one a couple days ago just because it was going up, okay? Nothing, nothing fancy there. So far, so good on that one, free rolling. So I'm also free rolling on this one. I'm assuming my stop is right here. Fairly tight stop because I haven't been in it that long. It's not from this. Now I may have played this pullback back here. If I didn't, shame on me or my portfolio was filled, was all filked up as the, <laughs> anybody ever see that video? I, I went inside McDonald's cause the drive through was all filked up and they didn't give me my extra free McRib sandwich. She said, you don't look like you need an extra McRib sandwich. And I said, excuse me, bitch. <laughs> Hero, this one got whacked. I'm still in it though, hadn't got, hadn't got taken out. My stop's probably a little tighter than 18 cents. But that one's working out okay. If I can survive that correction, we'll see what happens. Matic, I just bought back, right? So that's a, that's a live, chase, live case of tail chasing. Probably got in around uh, I think I got it at 199, flipped it out at some point because it came back in, and then there it is now, or at least was making new highs. So that's where you got to get a little bit, uh, be careful. All right, I think enough, I've pontificated enough on that. Uh, you want to look at ENS, ENS, and who want? Oh yeah, this is one that I've I've been in and out of. Uh, it's not doing anything right now. Who's who's this? This John. Okay, John. Ah. Uh, it's kind of interesting, and, and I guess it's kind of a new uh, a new one. I actually, by accident, learned a little bit about this uh, Ethernet stuff, uh, Ethereum name service stuff. And I think you could actually set up a website where somebody could just go to this website with an ETH extension and uh, pay you directly through crypto. And then uh, there's a dot .crypto one, which I picked up for myself which is supposed to be even better. Now, I don't know the purpose of the actual token itself. Some of these tokens have purposes. Some of them, I have no idea what they're trying to do. And some of them, a lot of them are gaming ones. Those game, when I say gaming, I mean more, uh, I mean the game, like computer games, metaverse, computer game type of things like uh, Sand is one, Meta, M-E-T-A, obviously is one. And uh, maybe Soul and Hero. I'm in Hero. I don't know if I showed you. Yes, I showed you Hero earlier. And maybe that Avalanche is too. I don't know. But those things could really, really rip when they go. So I would hold off on this ENS. I see what you're saying, though. It took off and kind of pulled back in here. It's a little, it's a little unorthodox looking. But maybe hold off on that one for now, John. Gala. Gala is one that I was in. And I got knocked out of. I think that's another one of those crazy game stocks or gaming stocks. So yeah, this one looks fantastic. Good eye on that one, uh, John. Again, John's our IPO resident, resident IPO expert. But uh, looks like uh, looks like he's getting pulled into crypto. 
<laughs> I hope not the Judas growth there. Well, look at look at this though. See if I could just be a little patient. Okay, got in here what 16 cents, flipped it out same day, a little while later, 20 something cents, and then it ran as high as 85 cents. But I, I did catch a, a big part of this ride. I think I might have bailed out. Uh, probably in here somewhere, but I'm willing to get back in. See this little alert I have right here? That's gonna that's my hey Dave, how about buying some some gala or galax? Galax like I guess like galaxy, huh? There are thousands of planets in the universe, but they all look like the south mid the southwest. <laughs> you ever been out there with all the orange rocks and sand? It's pretty cool. That's that was for a book. Everything I need to know I've learned from TV. Mana. Let's take a look at that. Where's my mana USDT? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I like this one. In fact, let me put alert. Let me put alert in, just in case it goes a little bit. Now keep in mind that if this was like a stock that had this kind of erratic behavior, I wouldn't be as excited about it. But this is crypto, and one thing you could, must never forget is the market reflects the tr people that are trading it, and the people that are trading these things are probably a little schizo, I guess present company included, but you got a lot of wild and crazy traders that are trading this stuff, and I think us older, slightly more mature guys, and as my wife tells everyone, in the case of Dave, age does not guarantee maturity, <laughs> true, guilty. But I think that we could use a little money management. We could wait for the entries. We could be a little bit more prudent with this stuff. And I really think there's a huge opportunity for us in this, okay? All right, any more crypto before we uh, take off? John Z must not be here tonight because John Z and I go back and forth a little bit on the crypto. I haven't heard from him today much though, or at all. Okay, so that's crypto. Let's hop out and see if there's any more crypto. Let me know now while we got it all set up. All right, let's shift gears. Let me run you through the market a little bit, and then we'll uh, we'll start taking, or you can start punching them in now. Start uh, asking about individual stocks. You want me to take a look at? I'd be happy to do that. And let's see. I didn't go too crazy this time. I only bought one. Almost bought two, but just one. All right, let's take a look at a piece. As you can see, moving averages beginning to come together here, like I just said earlier. Not the end of the world just yet. Nor can you see it from here. We did dip below the 50-day moving average, as I said in the slides, while I was on the slides. But look at that. We're right back above it, okay? And one more big update like today, we'll be back above the bow tie moving averages. From that little alert I just got, it sounds like it's not happening in after hours. Just got knocked out of some futures. Oh, shucks. Golly. <laughs> That's, you know, that's what I sound like. I sound like, was it Beaver? Gee, Wally. <laughs> sound like Beaver when I'm trading. <laughs> Reminds me of the joke. What's the nastiest line I ever heard on TV? I won't say it. Uh, anyway, I'm sure some of you guys know it. Eighth grade boy humor. Take a look at the NASDAQ. You can see moving averages coming together. Uh, P's like the NASDAQ have pulled back into their prior pullback. So that's that's a bit of a bummer. Or pull back to their prior breakout more specifically however you want to look at it, but it's nicely above the 50. Once again, nothing magical about that. Moving averages are trying to bow tie down. A few big updates would negate that, so we need to pay attention. Russell was the biggest damn disappointment of all. It took off, broke out of this stupid base that it's been in forever, right? And then pff, came all the way back in. That is a super bummer. A little bit of a bounce today. If it keeps bouncing, it's set up. It's going to set up a bow tie sell signal to the downside. But let's hope—a word we should never use in this business. Let's hope it goes up a little bit. And let's see. A lot of weak areas in there. Banks not looking so hot. Financials in general. Insurance. As you can see, all these areas are bow tied down, or the bow ties are in downtrend proper order. There's a couple that are defined gravity though. M and C. Look, take a look at that. I think was it ARLP in the portfolio, or forget which one. That's an M and C stock. Must be ARLP. And we've been in that damn thing forever. And so far, so good. Knock on wood. Leisure, on the other hand, not so much. Leisure looks like a big fat short. If it rallies a little bit, I think it could be the mother of all shorts in here. 
And, it, you know, it's interesting. People in the know are saying that this uh, this new strain is, is overrated. <laughs> so it, this is coming from a doctor friend of mine who's friends with an immunologist. A real immunologist, not a politician immunologist. But anyway, leisure doesn't look so hot. Semiconductors, though, on the upside, looking pretty damn good, kind of hanging in there. One of the strongest, probably the strongest area next to M and C on a relative strength basis. So a lot of areas getting whacked pretty hard, but a few areas are doing okay in here. And as I preach, a big fan of the semis confirming or helping to confirm what's going on in the overall market. In other words, if the market is going higher, it's great when the semis are also going higher too. All right, any any stock picks? Any that you guys want me to cover? I know I know we talk a lot about a lot of different ones in Facebook all day. Anything else we didn't cover? And you know, by the way, this is this show is open to all. Okay, Facebook group is uh, you have to be a gold member at least of DaveLander.com. That keeps the riffraff out. Now, I'm kidding. All serious aside, I've been in, as I've said a thousand times. I've been in a lot of forums over the years, and they all die out. And they all they all before they die out, they tend to go to Lord and Flies, you know. And, and we've been lucky, knock on wood, come in uh, to uh, to not have that happen in the group. And I think that vetting has really really helped it out and i'm pretty excited about that all right any more going once going twice all right quiet bunch tonight no problem though we'll uh we'll pick it up tomorrow on facebook obviously i want to thank all you guys and girls for being here tonight anything unanswered bring it up at facebook we'll have a look at it if we don't talk between now and then everybody have a fantastic weekend thank you so much and may the trend be with you